Brotherhood and Betrayal is an in-depth look at the trials and tribulations of street gang and motorcycle club life. This isn't the run-of-the-mill book that doesn't get the goods. This book will go into detail of events that actually happen. All materials in this book have been approved by those involved. There is nothing poetic, nor is there any price worth paying for the life we choose to live on the streets. James Hollywood Machikari, Brotherhood and Betrayal. What's up, everyone? How you guys doing? Welcome to the show. It's Monday. Yeah, Monday, Monday, Monday. Yeah, the book will be coming out this week. Don't forget to check Amazon for it. April 1st, it's going to be a good one. Uh, today, I figured I wanted to take an in-depth look at something. Something that happened with the Wildwood Motorcycle Rally. And I want you guys to see how the media covered it. And how the cops presented it. And it was actually a big surprise that the uh, promoter of the rally actually went with the side of the freaking city. But hey, it is what it is. Now, I also want to go and put forth the argument that it is actually independence as well as locals that are actually the problem. Not the clubs, like the police would tell you. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, pound rock on, and the uh, second half of the show is going to be over on MotorcycleMadhouseRadio.com. As always, if you want to join the YouTube crew, yes, the Insane Throttle Throttle Club, you can by just hitting join. So, this is a subject that hasn't been covered a lot. And... If you notice, I've been going in the cases and stuff like that because I think it deserves a second look. And I really think this deserves a second look. Every major rally, we already know profiling exists. But what you don't know is how the businesses are threatened by the police or gaming boards if they have a gaming license. If they let club members in with a patch. I know there's a case uh, of that kind of going around in Rockford right now where the gaming board is threatening businesses. If they let uh, certain clubs in, we're pulling your license. That's how they get around all this nonsense. Hey, we're just going to pull your license and that shuts a business down right away. Especially here in Illinois where these gaming parlors are everywhere. People pay a lot of money for that license, and they're not going to risk it for anybody. And I can't, I can't blame them either. I really can't, uh, even though it sucks, but that's just the way of life. That's how authorities do it. In Sturges, they do the same damn thing with the casinos out there. I remember uh, hearing a story uh, a couple years ago how... The casinos, the hotels, the lodges, they were threatened with their liquor license permits if they let certain clubs in. What I don't understand, though, and I'm going to bring up some uh, arrest reports from Sturges last year and Wildwood the year before. And what you're going to see is the narrative is nowhere close to what the cops are saying about these clubs. Nowhere close. You'll actually find on the East Coast, it's actual residents of the town that have a lot of these charges. The mayor and city councilman, you're going to see one of the city councilmen on a news report that was done on this subject, talking about the clubs, they're the reason why we're canceling it. There's too many of them coming now. So we got to get rid of them. We got to get rid of this event. Even though it's going to cost millions of dollars in sales revenues, 
but they got to get rid of it. And you know what? The, it, Wi Wildwood was built up by this bike rally, and now that it's built up, just like so many other places in this country, something else just takes over now. It's already built up. It's a destination. They got what they want out of bikers, and it's see you later. And I don't think that's fair, but one thing bikers can do is stop giving money to these places. Stop going there. You already know most bikers ain't looked upon that good. Even if you're an independent rub. You know, that's one thing that always uh, makes me laugh. Is the I call them biker apologists. They're the ones that back some of this crap that Leo puts out about clubs. Well, if you didn't want this to happen, you shouldn't have done this. That whole attitude changes when they themselves are pulled over and profiled. Then it's like, oh, oh, wait a second, you know, this is really something that happens. But there are a lot of ra rallies that don't allow club colors anymore, uh, especially the smaller ones. Uh, and it's a sad state of affairs because a lot of these rallies were built on the backs of clubs. They did all the work building it up, getting all the hype going. Everybody started coming uh, from all over the country, all over the world to these things. And now it's time to shove them off. I always wondered if Leo actually sat down with some of these clubs and said, you know what, how can we work things out here? We don't like this, you don't like that, blah, blah, blah. How can we work this out to where there ain't no tension? But they never do, they're never gonna. You know, that's just the way of life. So, let, you know what? I want to hear this news report real quick. Uh, I think you'll enjoy this, but this is how it was portrayed on September 10th of 2020 by 6ABC Philadelphia. Let's take a look. Including the beating of a bar owner and... Uh, let me move it back. There we go. Supposed to be the roar to the shore, but the roar has been silenced this year. Oh, Jones funny. Reporter Chad Perdelli explains from Wildwood. After more than two decades of hosting the motorcycle rally, the Roar to the Shore, this year's event is canceled. Not because of the pandemic, but because of the outlaw motorcycle gang, Pagan. Organizers of the Roar to the Shore say the city denied permits to this year's event after the Pagan's motorcycle gang held its national convention event last year. They did a walking parade down Atlantic Avenue as a group. There was a large contingent of, of outlaw bikers that were walking down the street crying out. Pagan That's Nation. the organizer. And that was just a little bit too much, I think, for the business grasp. What caught our attention was the increase in the number of pagans. Chad Lackey is the executive director of the New Jersey State Commission of Investigations, which released a report this month detailing a string of violent incidents allegedly connected to the pagans in recent years, including the beating of a bar owner and landlord in South Jersey. Lackey says the increasing violence is getting more brazen. It's just raw violence. And that just complete and utter disdain for, for the law and order is what really is, is troubling. The roar to the shore may be canceled, but authorities say the pagans are still coming this weekend. We spoke to a few members who arrived outside a local bar. They declined comment on camera. Roy believes their continued presence means the permanent end to the road to the shore. I think it's pretty much the end of the road. The city seems to be pretty much uh, fixated on that. However, uh, I would hope perhaps uh, full heads will prevail. And the State Commission of Investigations recommends that the Attorney General's office here in New Jersey create a task force to help small communities like Wildwood here investigate pagans. <laughs> investigate the pagans. <laughs> Okay, what reason would they have to do that? This is all under innuendo that they were causing all these kind of problems. But the numbers, again, don't bear that out. Now, they're claiming that the pagans are nothing but raw violence, and they're going to have a task force set up to, for small towns to deal with them. Again, 
what is the premise of your argument? Why? Because they walked down the street and they were real scary and they were yelling stuff as a group? I don't think it was the businesses that had a problem with it because, again, they're making millions of dollars during that time. So why would they be the one complaining? It's law enforcement. Playing this simple, it was them that had a problem. But their numbers, again, don't fit the narrative. Let's take a look. Okay. This was September 10th. That was the year before. 27 were busted. Just 27 were busted. And this is in uh, the patch.com. Wildwood police charged 27 people in connection with the Roar at the Shore motorcycle rally. Charges included robbery, assault, illegal uh, weapon possession, and meth uh, distribution. Uh, then the goal of the law enforcement agency involved in the event was to provide safety and security to the public, the rally attendees, and public safety officers. Let's look at some of these charges. Guy named Michael out of Wildwood. It's a local. Contempt of court. He was released. Another one in Lower Township. He only had brass knuckles on him. And, you know, everybody goes after brass knuckles. They're illegal everywhere. Uh, but we all have them. Possession of a weapon for unlawful purposes. Being a certain person not to possess a weapon. Uh, weapon. So they got him for brass knuckles. Another guy out of Wildwood. Wildwood, a local. Two counts of robbery, two counts of conspiracy to commit robbery. One out of Chi Town. Two counts of robbery, two counts of conspiracy to commit robbery. It looks like those two were together. Another local. Two counts of robbery. Two counts of conspiracy. They they must have been working uh, together. They must have been working a freaking uh, scam, a freaking hustle. Because they're just young kids. 18, 20. Again, an 18-year-old. Same charges. Wildwood contempt the court. Uh, then they got a guy for possession of a knife for unlawful purposes. Another possession of a knife. Then a kept, uh, contempt of court charge, marijuana possession. I don't see anything huge here. I thought that their point for canceling the rally had to do with the pagans being violent. I'm not seeing it here. And this is from the previous year's rally. Masontown, West Virginia, two counts of a handgun possession without a permit. So it could have been a legal gun where he's from, but because he didn't have a permit for it in that state, that's why I think we should get freaking, uh, you know, nationwide law, one law, you know, to let everybody know what they can, you know, have uh, without a permit, hollow point ammunition, a knife. He was taken to jail. Again, I don't see no violence here. Another one, same thing. Same, uh, you know, without a permit. Handgun possession from West Virginia. Vinland, a knife possession. Pennsylvania, knife possession. Stone Harbor, knife possession. Uh, Wilkesboro, theft of movable property. That was probably a heist on a bike. Uh, the rest of it is like simple assault. Uh, two counts of marijuana, blah, blah, blah. Operating a motor vehicle while under the influence. Multiple counts of contempt of court. And that's about it. 27 arrests. That's what they had. And how big is that really? How many people... I, sh I couldn't find that. I didn't get the numbers on that. But we could have seen the percentage... But we going back to how they're laying this all out on one club is the reason why they canceled it. 
But the arrest didn't say this. The arrest didn't say and back up that they're a violent organization. Now, of course, they brought in that New Jersey crime report. Yeah, uh-huh. The New Jersey crime report. We know how one-sided that was. So I don't think you can go and claim that it's their fault. No, I think it's hyper-freaking-partisan freaking BS from the mayor and from law enforcement working hand-in-hand. Again, I cannot see businesses turning away that kind of money. They're in business to make money. And if they've been there a long time, them businesses, they know the pagans show up all the time. And they probably had dealings with the pagans that were good, had no problems whatsoever with them. But that's what clubs have to deal with at these major rallies. Now, this is one of the first rallies that was being solely blamed on motorcycle clubs or a motorcycle club showing up. It seems like law enforcement has a hard-on for pagans on the East Coast. You know, they had a crime commission. Uh, who goes through that, man? The last time I heard of a, you know, you got the Chicago Crime Commission, but that's for the outfit. But they're doing it for a club now? You know, are they trying to fill their coffers or something with that money that they're going to get from it? Who knows? All I know is it's not cool to put that. That's the kind of information that pits the general public against bikers. Over the weekend, I did a video because I was doing some research on a project I'm working on, a piece, an editorial type of deal. And the number one thing that kept on popping up under a different search that I was trying to do was are outlaw bikers dangerous? And then you see all the answers, because it usually comes from Reddit or Wikipedia, with all these incidences that clubs were involved in. It all pops up. So I decided to do a video on this subject, because I believe it's very important. Usually, you know, I was going to stop dropping videos on Saturdays and just move to another day because it's a slow day on Saturdays. But I figured this information needed to get out there, especially now that we're getting a broad listener base on the radio station that are not bikers. Maybe they could understand this, that what they're being fed by the Leo isn't true whatsoever. It's all BS. You know, that's why I'm pretty excited about the radio station, because we do have a reach to a whole different audience than just keeping ourselves biker-related. Now everybody knows we're going to do the biker news in the first segment, then the second segment, we're on the radio. But when they do hear the replays of this show, say on iHeart or something like that, they can hear those videos they can hear the first segment of what bikers have to face. The general public has to start getting informed from other places other than Leo. Because that's the kind of stuff you're always going to hear. That news report, the Pagans Outlaw Motorcycle Gang, the Pagans Outlaw Motorcycle Gang, that's all you heard in that. Then you had this old freaking uh, Walter Cronkite wannabe out there in the beginning of the news segment talking about this. Even though it happened in New Jersey, that was a Pennsylvania station. Again, it seems like a hard on big time for the pagans on the East Coast. But when you look at all the search results coming back to that one thing 
I was like, damn, they really got these people brainwashed. I never thought it was actually that bad until all the search, you know what, it funnels, because I got a program that funnels stuff uh, in the HarleyLiberty.com. It pulls feeds from everywhere with a keyword. And that's the one that kept on coming up. I was like, damn, man, we got work to do. We got to start talking about these subjects more often. Now, let's take a look at Sturges. Everybody knows 450,000 some odd people minus, you know, or plus whatever change went to that rally last year. It was that rally that got the freaking newspapers everywhere on us because we were going there because, you know, when COVID was happening, so bikers are dirty people. 450,000 people showed up to that thing. Now, every major club, with the exception of some, are there. You have Angels there, you have Dito's there, the Suns are there, and all the support clubs are there. These are the people that law enforcement and the city say are bad people. Let's see if it bears out, though. $20,000 was seized by authorities over 2020 Sturgis Motorcycle Rally. They seized over 18,663 over the seven-day rally period, mostly due to drug arrests and made uh, traffic stops. That's over four times the money, blah, blah, blah. Seven vehicles were seized for drug uh, possession compared to six vehicles seized last year. People dur died during the rally and crashes, only two people last year. Now, let's go over the real numbers here. 450,000 people, right? In Sturges. There were 115 DUI arrests, Rapid City 30, a total of 145, and the previous year was 171. Miscellaneous drug arrests, that's probably pot and all that sh crap. 173, 68, 241 district total, uh, 213 the year before. Now, felony drug uh, arrests, we'll just give the last numbers, 126, 131. Total citations, this can include showing your tits, and people wonder why I don't like the bigger rallies now, them PC pricks. Uh, 1,334. Warnings, 3,576. Huh. Non-injury accidents, 18. So 50. Injury accidents, 56. Fatal accidents, four. Fatalities, five. Those are the numbers. From Daytona. Last year. Or not Daytona, Sturges. But how many thousands of them people are club members? If they're trying to push this narrative... That clubs are just so big and bad and violent and they want to rape and pillage. Why doesn't the numbers bear that out? One of the reasons why is because people do not do their research. They don't do the research. So... They're going to believe every damn thing that the paper has to say. And the cops have to say. They're not going to do what I do and went and see, okay, let's see in Wildwood what happened. Well, there was a lot of locals there, young kids there got busted. Uh, what happened to the violent biker gang they were talking about? If they were violent, weren't shouldn't there have been more arrest? Major incidences? No, there was none of that. But they prey on 
your ignorance not to call them out on it. And let's be honest, the general public, if they're not in the motorcycles, they really don't care about bikers. They really don't. All they know is what they hear on the media. Media's telling you this, say it must be true. We all know how that goes. Here's something very interesting. And I haven't got the Daytona numbers yet. I will try to get those. Fox 35 Orlando. Daytona uh, Beach police officer arrested and fired. Accused in stabbing incident. This was March 11th. March 11th, the same place that they say there's a problem with bikers, but this was a cop. New video shows an off-duty Daytona Beach police officer holding a knife. He's accused of using that knife to stab someone outside a bar. That officer arrested and then fired. Fox 35 Samantha Sosa joins us live. And Sam, tell us more about what we see in this video. Yeah, Charles, this is some really crystal clear, high quality video, and it also shows the scuffle that happened before the stabbing out here on Flagler Avenue. Now, just not too long ago, I spoke with the stabbing victim's friends. They were here last night, and they're all really worried about their friend. They say he's still in the ICU, in and out of surgeries, but he just opened his eyes for the first time again this evening. If you look closely, you see a man carrying a knife behind his back. New Smyrna Beach police don't look like a legal a one surveillance video from last night outside Flagler Tavern on Flagler Avenue. Police say this is 50 year old Shane P. Jackson with a knife, a Daytona Beach police officer who was off duty fighting with a group of 20 somethings. A scuffle happens before officers say Jackson stabs a 24 year old man in the stomach. Jackson slowly walks away as security follows him. New Smyrna PD later show up and arrest Jackson, initially charging him with aggravated battery. But a department spokesperson says after police reviewed footage of the fight, they upgraded that charge to attempted premeditated murder. Daytona Beach Police Chief Jakari Young says Officer Shane Jackson is now fired. In a statement, he writes, Upon reviewing the evidence made available to me of this incident, I will not tolerate the violent criminal actions I witnessed from any member of this department. Shane Jackson has been terminated from employment with the Daytona Beach Police Department, effective immediately. What led up to all this? According to a police report, Jackson and the stabbing victim first got into a physical fight at Tate and O'Brien's, a bar a few doors down. Witnesses tell police Jackson was unwantedly dancing behind their friend, a 21-year-old woman. Huh. Witnesses say Jackson followed them to the next bar about five minutes later where the stabbing happened. Interesting. Right there in Daytona. You didn't hear much about that one, did you? No, nah, you wouldn't because it was a cop. Hitting on a 21-year-old kid. 50-year-old freaking ugly-ass dude. So, I don't know the numbers in Daytona, but I probably doubt that a motorcycle club member did what this cop did. I might be wrong. Somebody can send me the news articles, the links, if it did. The whole point of this segment, though, is the numbers do not bear any of this out. And maybe it's time for everybody to get behind each other and start calling these cops out point blank. So we're going to go on to the second half. China Dow sitting here right next to me. We're going to go have some fun on MotorcycleMadhouseRadio.com. 24-7 there's rock and roll playing. Man, we got tens of thousands of songs that are playing on that radio station. Uh, Monday through Friday, of course, in the morning is uh, the Motorcycle Madhouse Morning Mayhem Show. And then at nighttime... I turn into a funny DJ, <laughs> rocking with Hollywood at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. I'll talk to you then, man. Have a good one.